Hello and thank you to everyone for joining this webinar. I am Peter Hunter from the University of Stirling where I'm a senior lecturer in Earth Observation. In this talk I will provide an overview of the UK Lakes Observatory, a new pilot service developed for algal bloom monitoring in the UK. The funding for this research largely came from the UK Natural Environment Research Council. I must also acknowledge the wider project team involved in this work, not only my colleagues at Stirling, but also collaborators at the UK Centre for Ecology and Hydrology, the University of Glasgow, and our SME partners, 3DO. It is also important to emphasise that this work is by no means standalone. Rather, it builds on the considerable achievements of the NERC Global Lakes Project, which also involved significant contributions from the Plymouth Marine Laboratory and the Universities of Dundee and Reading. The two main drivers of cyanobacterial blooms in the UK are nutrients and climate. Previous work by our project team has shown that lakes in the UK are likely to be vulnerable to climate-driven increases in blooms, not only through the effect of elevated water temperatures on growth rates and nutrient release, but also as a result of decreases in river flows and flushing during summer droughts. In this study, published in Global Change Biology, we showed that lakes in the UK, particularly those north of 55 degrees latitude, are particularly vulnerable to such changes. However, our understanding of these impacts and the risks they pose to water quality in human health is significantly hampered by the fact that monitoring is currently infrequent and often reactive. The overarching objective of this project was to examine whether satellite data could be used to enhance bloom monitoring and underpin a new climate service for the UK. As part of the aforementioned NERC Global X project, we developed methods for remote sensing of water quality at global scales using ocean colour satellites. But these methods are not directly applicable to the UK because the vast majority of our water bodies cannot be reliably observed at the 300 meter spatial resolution afforded by these ocean colour satellites. Therefore, in this project, we had to look at the highest spatial resolution data provided by Sentinel-2. Sentinel-2 provides multispectral data at a native resolution of between 10 and 60 meters, which is much better suited to the scale of water bodies we find in the UK. So through the funding we received from the UK Climate Resilience Programme, we built a new pilot digital platform, which we have named the UK Lakes Observatory. This is the overview of the processing chain that underpins the UK Lakes Observatory. I don't think I have time to linger on the technical detail, apart from to highlight the fact that the processing chain employs an ensemble of algorithms for the estimation of chlorophyll which are dynamically mapped to the type of lake under observation. This allows the processor to adapt better to the spatial and temporal variability we see in the optical properties of lakes. This short video shows some of the functionality of the UK Lakes Observatory. The initial map shows the location of all lakes for which we process data, grouped initially by region. Currently, we are processing data for just over 900 lakes. This initial map layer allows users to toggle lakes on and off based upon their chlorophyll status and trend. This allows a user to isolate lakes already displaying bloom events or to show those with recent deteriorations in water quality. The user can then zoom slightly to reveal a map layer showing the current water quality status for all the lakes monitored at the UK scale. Here the symbology shows the chlorophyll concentration as well as the short term trend. We can see for instance 
that there's some lakes in the north of Broads that are currently showing quite high chlorophyll A concentrations. The user can then scroll or search for a lake of interest. Here I'm searching for Alton Water, a small drinking water reservoir near Ipswich in the south of England. We can then zoom to that water body and at this scale we're now presented with a new dashboard showing some basic information about the lake which we ingest from the UK Centre for Ecology and Hydrology's UK Lakes portal. At this scale, we can now view the satellite chlorophyll time series for this particular water body. And we can select any observations within that time series and display the corresponding chlorophyll product from Sentinel-2 on our map view. The data are currently produced weekly, although we can process the data daily if necessary. We also have the provision to issue real-time alerts to users should a lake or set of lakes exceed a given threshold concentration. The algorithms implemented in the processing chain behind the UK Lakes Observatory were trained and validated using available in situ monitoring data provided by the Environment Agency for England and the Scottish Environmental Protection Agency. Here we see that the estimation of chlorophyll in eutrophic lakes affected by blooms is pretty reasonable, particularly during the so-called bloom season which typically runs from midsummer to early autumn. We currently struggle, however, to estimate chlorophyll accurately in other low productivity lakes, but this is something we're working on behind the scenes at present through other projects. The comparisons are perhaps more interesting and informative when you compare the data at the lake level. Here's an example from S8 Water in the Lake District which is a eutrophic lake with a history of algal blooms. The monthly chlorophyll measurements from the Environment Agency are shown in red and the Sentinel-2 chlorophyll data are shown in blue. Underneath, bloom events are identified in both time series based upon the exceedance of the 80th percentile value estimated independently from the two time series. You can see that, although we underestimate compared to the monitoring data, the satellite observations do a reasonable job of tracking the seasonal and interannual variation in chlorophyll. We also capture the majority of bloom events identified in the in situ monitoring data were within a window of plus or minus one week. The UK Lakes Observatory is very much in its infancy, and we are continuing to work on all aspects of the processing chain. In addition, one of the next phases of this research will be to better integrate the satellite data with other in-situ monitoring networks, such as the citizen science data provided by the UK Centre for Ecology and Hydrology's Blooming Algae smartphone app. We are also working to integrate the data into a new smart catchment observatory called Fourth Era, alongside data from IoT sensors and models based on artificial intelligence. Finally, just to summarise, what we've demonstrated through the development of the Pilot UK Lakes Observatory is that firstly Earth observation can be used successfully to widen the surveillance of algal blooms and increase the likelihood of early detection. We see this approach as being very complementary to conventional and other novel monitoring approaches. It is not a replacement for lake sampling but it can be used to greatly enhance the quantity and quality of the data we collect. Ultimately, 
When employed operationally, the data provided by Earth observation has the potential to significantly improve our understanding of climate impacts on water quality in the UK and elsewhere. And I will leave you with this animation showing all the bloom events captured by the UK Lakes Observatory over the lifetime of the Sentinel-2 mission. Thank you once again for listening to this talk and I very much look forward to the panel discussions to follow.